and back in the saddle again. <laughs> yes, hopefully now you can make it through a whole recording without coughing. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> but those are easy to edit out. Okie dokie. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Ruby. Season 3. Yeah, Season 3, Episodes 3 and 4. What was that? That was me being too used to saying Season 5. <laughs> okay, I am saying it right now. Crow is one of my favorite characters in this series ever. Whole new meaning to the phrase drunken master. <laughs> but he's always drunk! What, what? As he puts away his canteen. Mm, he didn't so much put it away as go, eh, whatever. <laughs> Ah, uh, and that fight between Winter and him was really cool. Yes. Like, I'm going to goad this woman, and then we're going to have a fight, and technically I'll get to win because, oh, look, the authorities are coming, and I'm putting my weapon away. You're attacking an unarmed man. <laughs> naughty, naughty Winter. I think there's something going on between them. Or had gone on between them, I should say. <laughs> Well, the way they are shown in the opening credits, yeah. <laughs> Though the Ice Queen and Crow, that seems more like a fan fiction pairing. <laughs> and I do like how um, everyone's pretty much against Iron Head. <laughs> I know his name's thing else, but my brain's like, oh. Okay, remember, so I'll just call him Iron Head. Ironwood. Thank you. You could also say the General. Or James. <laughs> yeah, I like how everyone's like pointing out, like, your idea doesn't quite work. You're falling right into their plans. You do realize this, right? Right? <laughs> like, we need a guardian, not a military. You are sparking unrest. But, but, my warships make people feel safe. No, they make people think about war. It's in the title. They also make them feel uneasy. Yeah. The more this series goes on, the more I think that intro is getting very appropriate and it makes me worried about things. I am very concerned. Especially with, in the title song, there's a line where it says mirrors will shatter underneath the pressure. And Wise is associated with mirrors in her intro song. And they even reiterate the song in the next episode with her growing up. So I'm like, I don't know if it's a metaphor for Wise growing up, or if it's going to be a metaphor for Wise being seriously hurt at the end of the season. I think everyone's going to be seriously hurt at the end of this season. Because that whole, when you realize you can't save them, and there will be no hero to rise above. I'm also thinking everyone's going to get separated and be by themselves. So they lose the power of teamwork and the magic of friendship. They're dead. <laughs> Reference drop. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, there's a lot of fascinating stuff going on in this episode, and the art's just getting better, because I recently watched an episode from season one again, and then I watched these episodes, and I'm like, dude, they've gotten so pretty. <laughs> also, I'm tempted to, like, skip a couple of weeks just so I can watch the episodes on YouTube, because the player on Rooster Teeth's website is, it's just terrible. <laughs> I keep having buffering issues and just a bunch of other things with it. <laughs> Oh, that would drive me nuts. My only issue with the Rooster Teeth website today was, what do you mean there was a sale at the end of November? Where was I? <laughs> uh, we're talking about the figurines because I want some of those figurines, but they're so expensive. <laughs> the regular figurines aren't too bad. They're about the same price as Ban Presto figurines, and that's reasonable. If we're talking about the really, really nice figurines, yeah, I have never paid that much for a single figurine. Mm -hmm. It's like, God, look at the detail, and I might not just get, 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 get. It's like a figurine I saw of Cloud recently. I'm like, God damn, look at the detail on that. Look at the price. Oh my God, look at the price. <laughs> quality can cost. Yes. And the quality of this episode just keeps getting better. Storytelling's pretty good, too. Oh. Shall we move on to the next episode? Or do you have more on the episode three? Uh, the only other thing on episode three was that, oh, I don't know, Gemini and Mercury recognize Crow and we're like, oh, crud, oh, crud, oh, crud, oh, crud. Yeah. Also, apparently in that one episode where Ruby interrupted Cinder, 
it looks like they implanted a virus that allowed them to hack into people's communication devices so they can manipulate things. Like apparently the standings, not really the standings, but the order of people fighting in the tournament. Mm -hmm. So they can rig the matchups. So if they can rig the competitor list, they can probably also rig the randomizer that chooses what areas are available for the match. Mm -hmm. I like how we go from two areas to four. I had a feeling it would be something like that. Mm -hmm. And that match was just kind of painful because Mercury and Gem Knight were just way OP compared to Coco and that guy. Mm -hmm. It makes me worried because Coco and that guy look like some of the strongest people at Beacon. <laughs> At least the trainees, mm -hmm. anyways. Well, I'm assuming they're first years, since I think everyone who's on a team is in the same year, so they're among the toughest of the first years. And pretty much Mercury just took them out by himself. Pretty much. Gemini provided a little bit of distraction and assist with the whole, okay, let's separate them and distract them, but yeah. It just hit me her name. Gemini is usually twins, so she can create images of other people mm -hmm. and that was a nice trick i also like at the beginning of the match i like her glasses shattered i take that back <laughs> hmm and it just me i'm guessing that the two people we saw go into the grass weren't actually mercury and gemini i'm guessing gemini made duplicates of them as they were going into the grass and then they separated from there that's why there was no one in the grass when Coco blasted it away. Mm -hmm. And god damn it, Mercury. Jesus. <laughs> He's just so fast and powerful. It's like, there was no contest there. I know. It's like, could you at least pretend to hold back a little bit? Mm -hmm. And if he was actually holding back, ooh. <laughs> then we are really, really dead. Mm -hmm. I like the visual metaphors that are going on for Wise and her sister, like the caterpillar and the training she's going through with her sister and the tips and stuff like that. Yeah, so it was very nice that they, especially compared to the previous episode where she was very stiff and formal and distant, to be more encouraging and, you know, provide some advice. Also nice to get that very blatant thing of, okay, this is what a schnee should be able to do. Is she kind of... Grim doesn't look like a normal Grim, and it's soliciting her for affection, and she's petting it okay. Yeah, Schnees have awesome power. Why skip to work on that, would you? Because, you know, you guys have already defeated some pretty cool things. Like I said, apparently their power is, if we defeat you, we can summon you in a future battle. It's like, God damn it, I got my number. <laughs> and that little hint that she almost summons something, and that sword kind of looks like the sword, the thing she was fighting in the first trailer when she was first introduced. Mm. Mm -hmm. And in the trailer, it's also hinted that that scar on her face is from that battle, so. So, very interesting. And also, the context, or I should say the contrast between the family time with Winter and Weiss compared to the family time with Crow, Yang, and Ruby. <laughs> Let me tell you some stories sometime when you're older. <laughs> I love how Yang was like, ah. <laughs> No, it was Ruby. It was a Ruby. Was like, Ooh. Actually, both of them went, Ooh. <laughs> But at one point, mm -hmm. Ruby was laughing about the past, so that's kind of... Especially when the... And then, I was defeated by the length of that girl's skirt! <laughs> I know, we have this whole heroic thing going, Yeah, I walked, I was feeling tired, I went to the inn, it was filled with all these disreputable people, and then, I was defeated by the length of the innkeeper's skirt. Wow, you are a lech, I still like you. <laughs> you and Ringabel trade tips, don't you? Yep, Ringabel, one of our favorite RPG characters. It was very fun that Crow, Yang, and Ruby were playing mindless video games. It was nice that with the close-up at first, you know, they allowed us to think, oh, this might be a real fight. Now we know better. Yep, video game. I also like how they showed us that picture again and Yang's reaction to it. Because mm -hmm. we all know Yang has seen that particular red-clad girl there. And I'm actually thinking the girl in the white hood is actually Ro is actually Ruby's mother in the far left hand of the picture. You think that one's Summer Rose? Yeah. Hmm. I was focused on the red and how, oh, Crow's thumb is oh so carefully over the face the entire time. Well, he moves over the face. We actually get to see the face for a moment, then his thumb slides over to it. Mm -hmm. And I think the one that's in the white cloak is Ruby Rose. Not Ruby Rose. Pooey. Summer is... Rose. 
is Summer Rose because it looks a lot like Ruby except in white. And you can see a hint of like red hair underneath or black reddish hair kind of like Ruby's. Mm -hmm. And Crow does give them some encouraging words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Basically, always keep learning. Otherwise, in this world, you're probably going to die. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just because you're acting like Huntresses doesn't mean you're thinking like one. There is a difference between action and thought process. So you guys may be doing the right things, but you could be doing them in the wrong way. Or you're not taking in the bigger picture of that your actions aren't really, your current actions aren't really heading towards the bigger picture. You may be doing something, but it may not be um, moving forward overall. Yes, because okay, after the whole train incident, yeah, there's been like zero crime, no white fang, no anything. That would be something to be worried about. <laughs> mm-hmm, because things don't just stop like that. So that means there's somebody still in control. It's kind of like just before a tsunami, the water disappears. Mm-hmm. And then it all comes back. Mm-hmm. Overall, I really like these two episodes, and I can't wait to watch the other ones. Especially once it gets past midnight and I can actually be online without any metering. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, internet. God's not blessing me with unlimited bandwidth. Keep telling you, you gotta move to a more urban area. <laughs> And I like the little details with Weiss and the families and how they react to each other and interact with each other. Overall, two very good episodes. Yes, but I would like to see what Blake was up to because we've only th seen three of the four members of Team Ruby in these two episodes. Blake wasn't really around. Hmm, good point. So maybe that's what's going on in episodes five and six, which I saw were up, but I'm like, if I watch them, I'll get my episodes mixed up, so I should wait. But I want to watch them. And we have very good reasons that we haven't watched those either. And probably our next podcast we're talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on Ruby Season 3, Episodes 3 and 4. Thanks for listening. If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really enjoy listening to us blather on? Try subscribing. Also, comment sections there. Please be nice. Really, really like Lux's art? He does take commissions and also has a Patreon. All links in the description.